Okay, let's get started right away. First, uh, put in your Merlin disk in drive 1 and your work disk in drive 2. If you don't have an 80 column card and you're using a real Apple II, uh, you can use the Big Mac assembler. The menus and the keystrokes match Merlin and can be used in 40 column mode. I'm using a different emulator today. I'm using Virtual 2 for OS X. Uh, unfortunately, the step and trace routines have been removed from the Apple II ROM, so we're going to just use the emulator instead. Okay, let's uh, load our source. Uh, just type in example 1 and don't bother with the extension. Oh, uh, but it is important to choose the right drive, so press D to switch between the drives. When you press L again, it will bring up the same file name. Press Y to load that file. And now we're in the editor. The L command is for listing. If you include two numbers separated by a comma, you'll display that portion of your source code. Okay, there's uh, two changes from the original source listing that I put up on Facebook. One is uh, line 11 where you'll see there's a, a version comment. And the other one is the addition of the object statement. Uh, the object statement establishes the address where the object code will be placed during assembly. The default is 8000. So why would we do this? Let's say we're creating a new DOS for the Apple. We wouldn't want to write our object code to overwrite our existing environment, or we wouldn't be able to save our file. So let's assemble our code. And there's that update source. If we say yes, the editor searches for the first line that has a forward slash in it and puts it in edit mode. That way we can change our version or our build number. So now let's uh, quit out of here and save our source and save our object. S for save. Press Y to save the source code. and O to save our object code. Press Y. Q to quit out of the Merlin Pro assembler. Type uh, B run uh, example one to run our code. Excellent. Now our code has been loaded into 8000 hex. Uh, let's run it again, but this time let's put some text at the bottom of the screen. Since our code is still loaded in memory, we can call 32768, which is 8000 hex, to rerun the program. So we currently have uh, graphics mode and text mode at the same time. Well, maybe it's because we're in 80 column mode. So let's do PR number 0 to switch back to 40 column mode. And let's call our routine again. Didn't seem to make any difference. Well, that'll be one of the first things we're going to fix. But for now, let's start looking at the actual object code we created and see what it's doing. So now I'm going to start up the inspector in uh, Virtual 2. And that gives us the option of adding a breakpoint. Now, what will happen is uh, when you add a breakpoint, the machine will stop execution at that point, and you'll be able to look at the registers and basically get a general idea of what's coming up and, and what uh, needs to be changed. Uh, usually I set the uh, break on break instruction and break on invalid instructions as well in case we for some reason have some self-modifying code for example which uh, is going to generate uh, a bad opcode. So let's call our routine again. Remember we have a breakpoint set and now we've stopped at 8000 hex. When we're disassembling our code, we don't have any assemble tables, so we have to uh, figure out what F3E2 is. But we can look up 
that on the assembly lines uh, program and see exactly what uh, that entry point is. So that entry point is uh, HDR, initializes the high-res page one and clears the screen. So let's go back to our disassembly. So the next thing we do is uh, we call F6, F0. Uh, prior to that, we load the X register with number three. So let's look and see what uh, F6, F0 is. Uh, that's the H color routine. And the X register contains the color. But what is that color? Zero through seven. Well, that's when we got to pull out our Beagle Brothers cheat sheet. And we can see here that uh, the number three is equivalent to the color white. It's white one. Let's go back to our assembly. So now that we know that uh, we're going to clear the screen, um, we're going to set the color. Let's see what happens next. So we set a bunch of uh, registers and then we call F457. So let's look up what that uh, location actually is. That turns out to be the H plot routine. And it says uh, it plots in the current H color at the coordinates given. Um, it's identical to H position. So let's look up H position and see what registers it uses. Well, it uses the X and the Y register for the horizontal position and the accumulator for the vertical position. Okay, now remember the, uh, this is an 8-bit machine, so only 255 is the maximum value that can exist in a register. So we load the accumulator with zero, and then we transfer the accumulator to Y, which is the equivalent of copying it to Y, and then we transfer the accumulator to X. So the accumulator, the Y and the X register all contain zero, and then we call F457. So we're plotting a white dot at zero, zero. Okay, now we're in a section where we load the registers and we call F53A four times. I'd like to point out that the Y register is not set for the first call. Can you tell what value is going to get passed to the routine? Okay, so we previously plotted a point at zero, zero. Now we're drawing a line and we've driven, uh, drawn a line across the uh, top of the graphics screen. Now because this is emulated, some of the graphics get stopped before it actually draws it. So you're going to have to use a little bit of imagination. Now we've drawn a line down the right side. The next we're going to draw a line across the bottom heading back towards zero zero as the x coordinate and finally we're going to draw a line from the bottom left back to coordinate zero zero So now we have an unfamiliar uh, jump to subroutine, to FBDD. Now in the table that we saw before, it didn't actually include FBDD. But if you search through the assembly lines manual, you'll find that in the monitor, FBDD is a routine that beeps the speaker. And it doesn't have any, uh, any parameters to pass to it. Okay, we're down to our last two routines. Uh, FD1B is uh, key in, and it's the routine responsible for getting characters from the keyboard. Uh, once we enter this routine, the computer will begin normal execution and will remain that way until we press a key and it goes back into the inspector.
Okay, I could go uh, through all the documentation again, but instead I'm just going to tell you what the routine at uh, FB39 actually does. It just returns back to text mode, as you can see here. And the uh, final line of code is return from subroutine, which brings us back to our DOS prompt. So one of the annoying things about our program is that it's coming up in split screen graphics. So what can we do to resolve that? Well, if we go to and read location C052, all we have to do is read it. It will force the display to go into full graphics mode. There's no other uh, routines to call. All you have to do is read it. So let's give that a try. Let's change our program so that it reads C052 to switch it into full screen graphics. Okay, so let's go back into Merlin. If we can type ASSEN properly. Go into the editor and we see our program is still there. So let's look at the top of our program. So the first uh, routine at uh, line 35 puts us into high graphics mode. So what we'd like to do is right after that is access the location C052 to switch us into full screen graphics mode. So let's assemble our program, but uh, this is going to be a new version. So let's take advantage of the update source option and change our version number. Let's quit out of the editor, save our source and our object files, and see how our new program runs. Well, sometimes you, you fool yourself. I had forgotten that I had a breakpoint in the inspector, and so I couldn't figure out why my program wasn't running. So that's why I switched to uh, 40 column mode. But uh, once I started uh, calling the routine, I then noticed that the, uh, the breakpoint had been reached. So I skip over the high res call and then I resume the rest of the program. And as you can see, we are now in full graphics mode. We don't see any text at the bottom. And so I have an exercise for you. I want you to increase the size of that box so it goes right to the bottom of the screen. Enjoy.